There it is. I can never get it right. Oh my gosh. It always happens when Brian is gone. It always happens. Brian's gone, everyone. Welcome to Star Wars Newsnet Live. I always think the button's Already gonna like go apart. away. And then it just like it like always comes back and I hit it for no reason at all. Welcome in, one and all, to Star Wars Newsnet Live. Your one stop shop for all things technical difficulties to start a show it's uh truly remarkable you know here at star wars newsnet i think it's truly remarkable the death taxes um, at the start of these shows being diverse show. way <laughs> we're able to find a way to screw up the opening and you know we, we start off with with all of these things and you know i have a good question today. I usually start off with some sort of random uh, question to start us off. And I'm, I'm really excited for this one. But before we get going, uh, Nate, good to have you back this week. Jay, right. good to see you as always. Uh, my back. name is Tyler. And for those of you joining for the first time, you can find us here every Thursday night. If you haven't yet, this is going to be kind of maybe like the first of uh, like 20 or 30 shameless plugs for the evening, but please <laughs> like and subscribe uh, to the channel. We are like <laughs> nine subscribers away from, I believe, 8,000. 8, so Ooh. it'd be really fun to hit the 8,000 mark uh, this evening. So if you could go ahead and like and subscribe to that, let us know in the chat if you like and subscribe for the first time tonight so we can oh. get to know new members of the Star Wars and Newsnet YouTube family we try to bring you content here every single week and of course you can catch us here every thursday night now here we go guys you and mcgregor turned 53 years old on sunday i believe which is just absolutely hilarious because it was easter sunday and there's always that running <laughs> joke meme of you and being like star wars jesus and like grandma's home on accident so you and mcgregor turned 53 i want to know of all the characters in the Star Wars universe, which character's birthday party do you think would be the absolute worst to be invited Ooh, to worst. and have to the attend? Worst. Not the best. Which party do you think you would have like the absolute worst time at? Like this is not going to be fun. It's almost like uh, being invited to, if you're a Harry Potter fan, like being invited to nearly's Headless Nick's uh, Death Day party. If you remember that, if you're a book nerd and, and you got invited to that and you had to eat all like the rotten food and the deathly stuff that they were serving. I want to know, which character in the Star Wars universe, if you were invited to that birthday, you check your calendar, you have no outs. You have no way to escape. You are forced to attend and you are going to be forced Ooh, to put on a fake smile. Who is the person that you think that is the number one? I do not want to be there. I have stalled as long as I can. And Jay, you have been the chosen one to go first this evening. In the chat, while Jay is finalizing his opinion, please let us know. God. Who do you think would be the worst birthday party to attend in all of Star Wars? Jay, you have the floor <laughs> what if um you know i is it okay so i think this is actually the case though right but isn't um the clones actually came out in waves what if right. they all like right. were born on the same what if they all had the same birthday like you wave one a joint clone birthday <laughs> yeah the <laughs> You have to buy presents for every single one. Yeah, of them. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> buy, buy like or decide 000. who to leave out of your. <laughs> How many that presents might be pretty do you rough. have? That might be Five thousand right now, and a million more on the way. Like Christmas, <laughs> like sometimes you just can't buy the most lot of presents for everybody. So of course. <laughs> um, Manslayer says probably Grievous, the way he conducted himself in the Clone Wars with his B1 battle droids. No thanks. Yes, if you went to General Grievous' birthday party, there's a good chance that you're either getting killed or sacrificed for quote unquote the greater good of the Separatist Alliance. Nate, so long as you give him a, a, a lightsaber as a gift, <laughs> he'll be happy. He's yeah, that's fair. That's fair. You can add a fine addition to his collection <laughs> and he will be just fine. So, Nate, Ooh. you know, Manslayer is saying that General Grievous would be the worst um, birthday to attend. Jay is saying having to go to the joint clone birthday, I'm guessing on Camino, uh, pre uh, -submer submersion. What about you, Nate? Which um, Star Wars birthday would be the absolute worst to attend? You know, 
I have to think about the birthday parties I least like to go to, and it's the smaller ones. It's the ones that where only like four or five or even less people show up. Like the really and, intimate gatherings. Yeah, and there are people that you really don't want to interact with. <laughs> I can't think of a person that I would that would attract that type of company more than Watto. Than Watto? Because <laughs> when you think about it, who is going to his birthday party and would you want to be in the <laughs> same as, as those people? Like, Sebulba? Like, are you kidding me? Like, sorry, no, I don't want a party with Sebulba. He'll kick me in the face. <laughs> you have a party. It's, it's going to be Sebulba, know. probably the slaves he's owning at the time <laughs> and then if, one of those little tiny droids i forgot like pinch the nose what are those things called those little droids and he yeah. and he makes those attends do you have to pay is there a is there like a and that's the thing too it's you have to like pay to get into Watto's party yeah probably I mean, real if ben quadrinaros is there i think it'd be a good time but he'll probably blow the thing up and then like <laughs> So it's like I I don't know I I just can't imagine the company at that party being something I'd want to be around. I mean I'm a quiet reserved guy, but like when I actually do something, I want to enjoy my time. It's right. Like, so I don't know I I I, I don't know I, I can't really think of anything else. Like do I droids have birthdays. Do you think they have birthday parties for like uh, when they were created? Like when they yeah, turn yeah. online, maybe. Like this is when I turn. Like C three PO, I feel yeah. like would be a have it would be a terrible birthday party. Yeah, like I feel maybe. like that would be horrible. The like, other person this... that crossed my mind was uh, I, I can't remember his name, but uh, Mon Mothma's husband. I think that'd be a, probably a terrible party, but at least the <sighs> drinks would be good. So you oh, could at that least actually, that party would be fun. Yeah, I think but, the drinks would be good, and I think there'd be fun the games. Person. No, no, no. I you're, think you're you not would... going for him. No, I I think you could find things to do at that party that would make it worth your while. At, at oh. Watto's, yeah, no, you're not finding anything good to do at Watto's party. Mon, Mon Mothma's husband's party would be an absolute rager. Like, that would be the event where if you were, like, a single person, like, you're going to this party to, yeah. like, you know, you're looking to mingle. Like, you're excited yeah. to go to this party. Like, it's going to be, you know, powerful, elite people over the place. There's probably going to be some good looking aliens in attendance that you can acquaint yourself with. I would imagine like this is going to be a good time. Yeah, I now, think you'll I, have a good time. I mean, you. The worst part is buying to, a present yeah. for the guy yeah. who's throwing the party. Yeah, I, yeah, I wouldn't like receiving that that invitation to to remind myself that he exists. But at least I would go knowing that I could make something out of it. You, you probably hate yourself. Oh, yeah. Or like afterwards for like, man, I, I can't believe I like sucked up to that guy again yeah. just to get invited to his party. Like you probably like don't have any, you probably have a lot of self-loathing the day after, but uh, you know, in the moment it's like, this is going to be a fun party. It's going to be a fun party. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah. So great intro. Once again, uh, guys really appreciate you always playing along with uh, whatever random question we have. So there were just a few tidbits of uh, star yeah. Wars uh, news that Slow was week. earth earth shattering uh, today, but it was a uh, slow week until today. It, it was a slow week until today. So let's go ahead and start with the main, you know, topic. I think everyone w wants to talk about right now, which is tales of the empire. And I did not have time today to get like the poster that they put up for tales of the empire. But if those of you have not seen the trailer yet, you need to go watch the trailer and then come back here and join the conversation because the trailer was, you know, freaking it, it slapped. I watched it during my, my lunch break uh, today, and I had some of my students like peeking over my shoulder, and I'm <laughs> like, never watched Star Wars before, but they're like, that looks pretty fun. I'm like, you don't know what's going on, but sure, yes, it is. So <laughs> what do you guys like most about the trailer? Like, are you looking Ooh. for the, the Barris storyline more or the Morgan yeah. Elsbeth storyline? Because the Barris storyline, obviously, Inquisitors, Grand Inquisitor, Darth Vader, that's going to be pretty awesome but you know some people you know yeah, they like I, their tea you know their meal served with a side of thrawn and so morgan else <laughs> you get thrawn you have general grievous showing up and night sister magic she has her little blades that looked really cool so i'm curious what you guys which storyline maybe you gravitate towards a little bit more and nate what about you um i mean barris is the one i'm more interested in for the lore mm -hmm. and seeing how barris's story continues because like we have no idea Mm. where i mean with tales of the jedi 
we knew where Ahsoka's and Dooku's story would go. Mm -hmm. We don't know where Barriss's story is going. So this is completely, totally new. Um, so I mean that just because I like seeing new stuff, but um, but I'm I'm curious about Morgan Elsbeth um and the character arc that that we could see out of her because like I don't know it's just we haven't spent enough time with we have what we haven't but we haven't really seen right. um the Night Sisters and their reaction right. to death Amir getting mm -hmm. scourged and I'm very excited to see um her versus Grievous I I think that'll be oh. really interesting yeah mm -hmm. um, a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, yeah. When I saw Grievous, I'm like, oh wow, we're really going for it. And then you have Thrawn, you have Inquisitors, Darth Vader as well. Like, I was really impressed by mm -hmm. how much they showed in the trailer, and and really didn't really didn't even give us a whole picture of what we could possibly see as well. I mean, we could probably surmise various things, but right. I have, so I have a question. I have a question. And Jay, I, I do want to throw it to you on which storyline you're looking forward to. But, you know, Nate mentioned the Barris storyline. So in Manslayer kind of beat me to it a little bit. I'm curious about a couple of things. One, is it possible that we see a Reva in animation for the first time being this is a Inquisitor story? Could we get some hints to her whereabouts? Uh, second thing would be what if anything will be hinted at with Vader's feelings towards Barris, because she yeah. is the reason for Ahsoka being separated from Anakin. And I'm sure that Vader has some resentment there at this point in time. Oh, yeah. And lastly, we saw in the corner, like the, I believe that's the inquisitor that Ahsoka takes oh, yeah. out in tales of the Jedi. That so is totally Merrick. Is, yeah, is or, there, or Mark, uh, or whatever heck is Oh, sorry. Is. I was, I wasn't talking about Merrick. That was in Ahsoka, but if on the, on the end, the, mm. like the mask, it looked like the one she took out in tales of the Jedi as well. Like to me, I don't know if yes. that's confirmed, yes, but I'm, I'm that pretty confirmed? sure okay. it was. Yeah. And so I'm wondering, is it possible? I don't think we'll see Ahsoka in this, but is it possible no. that they could be hinting at a potential meeting at some point between the two, because their storylines, you know, at some point you feel like, mm. We don't know where the story is going, but it if anyone was going to interact with Ahsoka from her past that's on kind of a dark side or Imperial type uh, story other than Vader, it would be Barriss. And if she's still around doing Inquisitor things, it, it stands to reason that it would make sense to bring those two together again at some point in some fashion. So I'm curious to you guys, do you think that we'll get any hints as to what a potential ahsoka barris reunion would look like what's vader going to be doing in all of this and could we see uh reva so jay i'll throw that to you real quick you know what's funny like i'm going through um i was watching a trailer and i was actually expecting iscata Karis to actually be one of the um inquisitors that's like a really deep dive but that's from a uh, rise of the red blade um, really great book for anyone who hasn't checked it out yet. So Reva might definitely could be another possibility. Um, I'm thinking Barris Um It's really interesting because like Nate mentioned, we don't know right. where right. the character ends up. Ahsoka season two, maybe. I don't know if that's what they're setting up for or if maybe they just maybe. want to conclude Barris' story here and maybe have Darth Vader take her out. I'm thinking because I'm thinking that when they do finally meet, it's going to be it might be a very violent confrontation. <laughs> right. And I'm sure Vader, I, I would be curious to know. And if you guys are more up to date on your Inquisitor lore, that would be great. So it sounds like when Vader is coming in to meet the Inquisitors, it's like this is the first time they're meeting vader and he says let me introduce you to your new master so i wonder how aware because no one really knows who vader is there's only a handful of people who know That's vader's true. real yep. identity at this so time yep is vader even aware that barris is being trained by the grand inquisitor as one of you know the potential inquisitors or when he walks into the room for the first time and sees her is that the first time that he's like you're still alive and you're around and you're supposed to be working with us no thank you like i'm curious if that's gonna like if we're gonna learn more about you know that aspect of it because jay brings up a point that could be a very violent first meeting if 
you know, if, if Vader is deciding yeah. to like not necessarily work with this person. Well, Nate, you probably know this be- better than I do, but I mean, in the Darth Vader comics, he absolutely resents the Inquisitors. Um, I can't remember when it is that Vader actually meets them for the first time. But, you know, you're totally right. It's like, this This is going to be a really interesting meeting between the two which, and between the Inquisitors. Yeah, um, I'd have to go back and read uh, Soul's Vader comics because that kind of established a lot of the lore that was that it expanded upon in the Inquisitor book and whatnot. But yeah, it's like Vader's relationship with all the Inquisitors was tenuous at best. Like <laughs> um, he would murder them. Is, is that though Vader's uh, a relationship with anyone at this point? Tenuous oh, yes. Yeah, at best. <laughs> yes, and, and and like there's a, 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 throughout the Vader comics, they've been playing with the idea of Vader not being afraid of being supplanted in the Emperor's eyes, but that's always been in the back of his mind. Mm-hmm. And like the Inquisitors are would be the next evolution if vader were, were to go down so i mean right. um so he's basically fighting for his place and it's that whole dark side elements and sith side to it as well so mm-hmm. i mean my thought would be if um, um because i do think when vader walks into that room i think it will be the first time he sees he realizes that barisafi is there right um because I can't remember if he scouted out talent or whatever. I can't remember, but it seems like the Grand Inquisitor kind of has yeah. free reign until Vader shows up. Like it is his very much mojo. so. Um, very much so. Um, I, I I I do remember in the comics that the Grand Inquisitor was the guy, and then Vader came in mm-hmm. and said, "All right, you guys proved yourself. Now prove yourself again and go kill a Jedi." Um. So. And this is a good point brought up by Randall in the chat was do you, it's he thinks that that Jedi or whoever that's wielding that blue lightsaber in the trailer. He thinks it's Seer. It re- resembles Seer, uh, resembles her from the story with Trilla and Fallen Order. I, I, I did not think of that when I first did because I Trilla is a possibility. But and, and, and It could be Trilla even. And it could be I'm Trilla. I'm curious to see what happens with, with everything. It's, or Trilla could be in the series and then Seer maybe makes an initial push to free Trilla from the Inquisitors. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm, that's possible. I, I think it, the be, the odds on favorite is that it's just some random oh, yeah. like person that they throw in for the first time, but it would be cool if it's something that is somewhat lore connected in some yeah. form or fashion. Do you think we'll get any at the end of Barris's arc? Do you think there will be any, like indication at future stories she could pop up in, or do you think she will die in this arc? It's going to be like, here's your three episodes about Barris and she's done. Cause I, I just, I'm one of those weirdos on star Wars and star Wars fans that just really am craving for a Barris Ahsoka reunion in the yeah. future, just because mm. the last time we saw them was in, you know, the Senate trial chambers. And I, I think that it would just be really interesting to see, you know, how they, you know, come together in, in the, again, later on after she's fully embraced the dark side and, and she's there. And I just, Ahsoka season two, everyone like random put that in the chat. It makes sense. But at the same time, how do you work Barris into an Ahsoka season two when yeah. she's in a completely other yeah. galaxy? Like, it's I just tough. don't right. know how they would do that story-wise. Now, of course, that you know season is coming up, and who knows? They could easily work around where they're only in the new galaxy for one episode, and oh, then yeah. and then they come back. It's, it's not ours. like it's impossible. we don't really spend a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's like okay, quick hyperspace jump, and then and the then plot's we're always good. moving. So Mandu and Grogu too, yeah. are only separated for literally in the Mandalorian zero a few episodes. episodes. So yeah, they, they, <laughs> zero episodes because they're back together. Yeah, so it could it could absolutely be anything, but I I just don't think that feels right at this moment. But I'm curious what you guys think about a possible Ahsoka Barris reunion. But it depends on what happens here in these three episodes right. for sure. What do you what do you think, um, Jay? We'll throw it to you this one. You know. As as cool as I think a uh, Barris and Ahsoka reunion would be, I wonder if oh man, like I, I I was just thinking about this in my head, like is that too much of a deep cut? And then I'm thinking to myself, well, 
all of season one of Ahsoka was kind of a deep cut to begin with. So I, you know, like it, I think it's possible, right? But my gut feeling kind of, and I hate to go back to this, is the whole Barris is actually Marok theory that was that began but Marok in season is one. standing in the, but Marok is standing is he there. Really? Yeah, we, actually, yeah, he's you know, there. Okay, he's standing maybe there. not. And then oh, Barris okay. is there. Unless he nullified. Unless that Maroc dies and then Barris takes on the mask or they have a connection. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it's like, like this yeah. is mine now. <laughs> like, yeah. And she goes off. off and does whatever, like she leaves the Inquisitorius, and that could be kind of <laughs> I don't know. So this is not a funny comment by Mansaradoff. It just it did make me chuckle. He goes, I think that has great dramatic potential, but I would like her to die. And that's I just took it possible. as like I'm but I took it that as like he personally is like sitting there like <laughs> please die, like kill kill her. Kill her now. Like do it. And so <laughs> I, I I can't wait to see what happens here because there's so many like stories, like you said. I don't think it would be too much of a deep cut, Jay. Because Ahsoka in itself, see, the show seemed like a deep cut in itself, you know, five years ago. And a quick exposition dump on why this person is important to Ahsoka in a few minutes could could pave the way for their, you know, showdown in Ahsoka season two. But they could also tell the story of Barris and Ahsoka in like a future Tales of the Jedi story. Maybe that's a story they have for Tales of the Jedi season two. And this is a way that they're going to introduce what's going to happen there in that tale. So who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk real quick about the Morgan Elspeth side because we focused a lot on Barris. Morgan Elspeth, I thought it was really cool. We're getting a young Thrawn in the trailer. Like you're going to get young Thrawn before he's Grand Admiral Thrawn. And so I wonder uh, what that relationship looks like before Thrawn has made his, you know, triumphant, you know, ascent to the top of the Imperial. Uh, ladder so to speak and then of course we're going to get some hints about their relationship uh there's going to be you know her showdown with grievous what are you looking forward to most with uh the morgan elsbeth side of things i i personally cannot wait to watch her use that best car spear and action because in the trailer she's blocking blaster bolts with that spear and i thought it's like i just never thought we'd see someone that was just kind of cool. I don't know why that stood out to me. It's just, it just really cool. So, Nate, what are you looking forward to most on the Morgan Elspeth side? Um, I think just getting to know her a bit more. Um, because, like, we met her in The Mandalorian, and she was just the villain there. And then we got a little bit more about her and Ahsoka and the fact she's mm -hmm. a night sister and whatnot. But I'm interested in um, her relationship with the Empire. Um, of course because like she's on the outskirts of everything like mm -hmm. she is a night sister she got played by the separatists and her home destroyed and then she got sent to some outskirt planet and we're going to see post empire i, I believe because the, there is that segment where we see the mm -hmm. older version of the character so we're going to get some of that. that that'll be interesting to see how that plays out but, yes I'm interested to see how she interacts with Thrawn and her mindset as the galaxy is changing and how she fits into all that. So I'm interested to go on that journey and kind of just get to know her a bit more. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that'll be the whole point of those three episodes, plus Absolutely. tying in and kind of closing up some loose ends with Ahsoka as well. Mm -hmm. because we were very Absolutely. confused on the relationship <laughs> with Thrawn. So yes. And, and now we won't be because we will see how that begins. So. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's going to get her out of a few tight spots here. And that's maybe where yeah. some of the loyalty factor comes into play. Jay, any thoughts on Morgan Elsbeth before we move on? I'm really excited to just see these awesome performers um, yeah. being able to come back in these roles. I mean, Diana Lee, you know, Sansel. But so cool. Really? Yeah. Really in the trailer, awesome. the voice acting is great. Yeah. Absolutely. So she's just, you she's know? just a really cool person. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like, I know these are just voice roles, but I think that mm -hmm. I exactly. just look at, um, just look at Lars Mikkelsen as well for um, uh -huh. Grand Admiral Thrawn. I mean, it's so cool mm -hmm. to just, again, see these actors and performers, you know, in whatever capacity, lending their talents to these awesome characters. Mm hmm. 
absolutely it's gonna be it's gonna be really fun and can this be a note to star wars in the future about keeping things under wraps and just dr and like <laughs> dropping these fun excitements like we had no idea yeah that this was even in the works yeah. or a thing like or that was gonna happen there was a before. very obscure rumor from a fan podcast that shouldn't have any information but clearly knew something <laughs> and, and i wish i could remember who i don't know had so, the... I, I think some people just throw stuff at the wall and see if it sticks like oh, yeah. maybe that, maybe it. tomorrow i'm just gonna like have uh something i'll put on twitter's like oh, here are rumblings of uh something coming in the star wars world so in the first time that something popped up i'm like see that that's actually the thing i was i was talking about yeah. if you if you want to know uh, so let's move on because we got a look at Jeki from the Acolyte. We got a few looks at some Acolyte stuff, and she's uh, Thelen, which is part – she's like part human, part Thelen. Am I – is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So yep. she's like the pad one from the show, and I don't want to spend too much time talking about the Acolyte because uh, pretty much all that happened in the Acolyte was they dropped a po – uh, Empire Magazine dropped a look at the cover for a new issue coming out that's available for pre-order, I believe, right now. It comes out April 11th. I don't want to be completely incorrect on that, but I believe that's the date. And the cover looks awesome. I can't. We all can't wait for the show. We're all very excited about the show. But I wanted to ask you guys something, and Jay and I talked about this very briefly um, in our Discord channel. And in the chat, I'm really curious what you guys think about this because I have been on – this show a number of times and in our other formats, a staunch defender of most of Disney star Wars and actually being a fan of most of what they have done for whatever reason. And tell me if I am just nitpicking and this is really ridiculous of me for whatever reason, especially with the shows, the lightsabers, because the movies I think are, they look fantastic. The lightsabers in these shows and the glow sticks that they use now to do these instead of what, you know, they've used in the past, either in the OGs, the prequels and and the way they digitize it in the you know movies looks different. But for whatever reason, the lightsabers in these shows just do not feel fantastical enough to me or, or mythical enough, whatever the right word is. Because I can almost just tell that it's the glow stick and it doesn't feel if we watch, I look at the glow stick and I want lightsabers and I don't, I know it's practical and Jay was telling me how they want it to be. So like the lighting is kind of really nice and looks like it's, you know, radiating off of them. But I want lightsabers to look like they do in, you know, some of the sequel movies, but like really like that prequel look where they don't look practical. They don't look necessarily real. I think that adds to the, the mystique of the Jedi and the Sith or lightsaber wielders in general. I, I want the lightsabers, the less it looks like I could figure a way to use that in real life, the better. Like that's kind of what I want with lightsabers. And these don't have that take me out of my realm kind of vibes i don't know how to necessarily explain that they just it looks just too practical to me and i think we're all fans of practical sets and and applying things but i do really think that there's some things that just look better completely done in a different way and i think the lightsabers are that so i'm curious if if you guys think the same thing or if if i am i just being kind of a little bit too much of a nerd right now in how i'm viewing my lightsabers uh nate i'll throw it to you first and then and then we'll go back we'll circle back to jay here oh uh, i mean no i don't think you're being uh picky at all um yeah there's definitely um and i've said it before on on the on the show as well it's like some of these disney plus shows there's just something missing and it's hard to really figure like visually? out what it is. Yeah. Visually and just immersion wise. I, I, cause it's, cause it's not necessarily the volume. It's not the fact that mm -hmm. you, sometimes you can't really tell where the money is going. It, it's just mm -hmm. something is missing from, from some of this stuff. And it's not from a lack of vision because like Dave Filoni is one of the most imaginative persons out there. And right. And John Favreau and all these guys, they they, they clearly love Star Wars, mm -hmm. but I don't know. It's just it, it's I'm hard to yeah. 
I don't know. And, I'm, I'm, but Andor looked fantastic. I know. Like, I feel like it, Andor looks it, fantastic. It's weird. And it, it's I weird. just got done watching, and some people, I'm sorry I'm bringing up Star Trek again on a Star Wars show, but I love watching Star Trek and Paramount with the Star Trek stuff. I never feel like it looks uh, shortcutted, or I don't ever have this issue with Star Trek. I just watched a new Star Trek episode that, for the final season that they dropped for Discovery, and they're in space, they're flying around these ships, and it, it doesn't look like the way it does in these Disney shows where I'm like, it just doesn't yeah. quite like look like I'm in another place. It looks like we're it, just sitting out on the back like line I am in Hollywood. putting a camera out there and, and just shooting something that was just half-assed. Like, and I, it just I, I dropped know. in randomly. Yeah. And then yeah, I, as soon as it's done, yeah. I just, whoop, it's gone. And especially with the lightsabers. And that's the thing that I feel like you have to, to really make feel otherworldly when it comes to star Wars, because that's, that's, the main not the only reason people like star wars but lightsabers like everyone thinks the lightsabers are probably the coolest part or one of the coolest parts about star wars and if they just look like any other little glow stick that you're turning on it, it for whatever reason it just doesn't always it hit the way i think that they want it to jay what about you are we am i being a little bit like much right now Oh, no, absolutely not. Um, I think that there are definitely some legitimate things to point out, especially regarding lightsabers, regarding the Acolyte and the photos they showed of Daphne Keene mm -hmm. um, as her character. The makeup, it's not the best. I mean, like I think that I mentioned it in our Discord chat, but it looks kind of cheap. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, you know, like, there are many factors regarding that. And like you said, Andor looked really great. Um, so Disney is, it's, I think with Disney, it's definitely not a issue of money. I'm thinking it's, it just might even just be a, um, mm -hmm. an issue of who you got behind the camera. And be, I don't um, watch a lot of other Disney Plus shows, but if right. you guys watch other Disney Plus shows, is this a thing that's recurring throughout others? Like, some of the Marvel shows I've watched Loki, but throughout other, I haven't really watched other Disney plus shows. Is this something that is consistent across the board with Disney? It's not just like a, like a Lucasfilm Disney thing, or is it, is this specific to star Wars? I don't know. I'm, I'm curious if, have you guys watched anything that gives you the similar, the vibes, so to speak? Not on the same level as star Wars. Um, is it because we watch it like we're scrutinizing Star Wars more than we probably be, scrutinize? It could be that, could other be that but also I'm thinking that like um, uh, I'm mm -hmm. thinking that uh, you know with um, the the Star Wars stuff, it like yes, it could it, like I I just I just I think it has to do with like the the DP, the director mm -hmm. of photography, and helping to make sure that the things look bright, like the lightsabers mm -hmm. are the right luminance. And then having like the darker stuff look darker. And um, I do I and I get that argument because you, you said that in the chat, and I, I respect the the practicality of that argument. And but I'm almost I'm sitting here going, and I'm curious if you guys have you ever watched like a lightsaber ignite or them, you know, fight with the lightsabers and been like, oh man, the the lighting across her face. It's when she lifts her lightsaber. It's perfect. No, I'm 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 interested in the way the lightsaber looks, the choreography with the lightsaber and the stakes of what's happening. Because when a lightsaber is ignited, the last thing a Jedi wants to do is ignite their lightsaber. So when it's ignited, that's that's the moment where you know it's about to go down. And so I'm more focused on what's happening around. So if we're spending you know disney's caring way too much about that the way that you know the looks in a dark backdrop i feel like that is uh, time and money spent in the wrong place uh nate you can have the final word on all of this yeah um, um you asked a question of, as well or not this is a disney star wars thing or if it's a disney plus thing and i think there is an element of the sense of something missing in like other Marvel pro because I stopped watching the Marvel television shows because I, I don't know. It, it, it's just, there's, mm -hmm. and I can never really figure out what it is could be because in every single show, it's something that I don't know. It, 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 it it's really weird because like the movies are their own thing and the shows mm -hmm. are their own thing and, and you can't really cross them, but they're trying to cross them and mm -hmm. these 
they're making these television shows that aren't really television shows. They're just, right. I, I, I don't know. It's just, mm -hmm. I don't they, know. And it's yeah. very, it's very curious because other platforms, I'm sure given, we don't know always the specific budgets of these shows anymore, but I can't imagine that, you know, shows that we see on like Max, Paramount, Prime, like the the budgets that for those shows cannot be that much more than what yeah. Disney is spending on Star Wars. Yet sometimes the visual why it's quality so of those is like night and day differently. And it's like, what is House of Dragon and Last of Us and, and shows like that doing with the similar budget that The Mandalorian has? But those shows look infinitely better. It's, right. It's like, so I don't quite know mm -hmm. what it is sometimes, but yeah, I just want to know where the money's going with some of this stuff. But <laughs> let's get the access to the spreadsheet. Circling back, circling back. I, yeah, the lightsabers don't really bother me all that horribly okay. much. That's they, good. I, in in all honesty, it's, it's other things visually about these Star right. Wars shows that irk me sometimes. I think the lightsaber is like the microcosm of like the larger thing that we were all feeling. And that for me was just is what had stood out to me there. Cause I, I agree with you. So uh last thing before we talk about the bad batch, we don't have to spend too long on this because I just, I don't know why I just really wanted to talk about this this week. So Daisy Ridley got asked about is John, would she like to see John Boyega back as Finn in star Wars exploring his Jedi? Of course, she's going to say, yes, I would love that. But of course it's not, necessarily her decision to make perhaps and she said you know that's like above her pay grade this is a discussion i want to have in a longer form i just wanted to have a quick touch point on this because this was going around uh, the waves for a couple of days this week and i think it's a good conversation to have and in the chat please let me know what your thoughts on this are as well how important is it for this ray movie to succeed that john boyega is Finn and comes back and reprises his role as Finn for this movie because they're going to go forward with this movie one way or another. And I, I'm on the camp that believes that he's going to come back and they're going to announce that at some point and he's going to come back as Finn. But I think it's just a good hypothetical question. How important do you think it is for him to come back? Like, is it critical that John Wayne come back as Finn for this movie to really be, hyped up and as successful as they need it, frankly, need it to be. Uh, Nate, or sorry, Jay, we'll go to you this time. We went to Nate first last time. Jay. Um, as much as I like Finn John Boyega, I don't think him being in the movie is going to be the most important thing. If he's not in it, I think that it could still work. Um, because, you know, again, the movie is all about Ray and about Daisy Ridley's character. And so to have Finn be in there, I'm concerned about, what I'm concerned about is that if he's in there, it might put less focus on Ray, which mm -hmm. that needs to be the focus. Okay, that's fair. I And we don't know the, the story though yet. We just know that Daisy Ridley's coming back. We don't know if it's going to be just a soul Ray movie, like if John Boyega, they're writing a script thinking he's going to be back. I mean, it could be like a, you know, they're a tandem like co-starring in this you know movie for all we know, but uh, we have no idea, but I was just curious. You don't think it's necessarily critical that he comes back. What about, what about you, Nate? I think it's very important. Uh, just as I think it's important that they back up a similar size dump truck of money to Oscar Isaac and have him come back too. Um, simply because, like, we want this, just like anything, we want to feel lived in. We want to feel mm -hmm. transported to that world. It would be weird to go back to the sequel world and not have these characters there. Um, even if they're just minor roles. Um, just like it's weird if... I'm, I'm just like, it's going to be weird if Yoda's not an acolyte or mm -hmm. this character and that. Um, we expect them to be around, mm -hmm. so we need a reason for them to not be around. Um, and, and that's very easy to do, very, very easy to do. I mean, there's a 15-year gap of time between Rise of Skywalker and this movie. So, so they could say whatever the heck they want, and we'll be fine with that, because we don't know the story. Nor do we know if Rey is going to be the main character in the movie. So... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's for me, it is important just to transport us back into Star Wars. 
mm-hmm. um, in, 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 in that time period. Um, but I mean, it's not going to make or break the movie per se, um, because they could tell whatever story they want to right. just fine. So, so I, I think it's more important than we might think at first. I think that it's not going to make or break the movie. I don't believe that because they could tell a great story without Oscar Isaac and John Boyega, and it could be, you know, a kick-ass Star Wars movie that everybody loves. Like, I don't think yeah. that it's necessarily predicated predicated on that. I do think it is borderline critical, though, that he's in the movie. I think if he is not in this movie, I think there's no way Oscar Isaac comes back to be in this movie if John Boyega is not in it. And if you're trying to sell me on a future Jedi story 15 years after the sequel era is over, and two of your three main stars from that era aren't going to right. to make an appearance at all. It just feels like what I just watched at the end of the Skywalker saga has a little bit less value than other Star Wars movies. And it just it feels like your uh, the story te- the story is not going to be as important here. Like the story is not important enough to justify everyone coming back. Uh, and so I think it is very important. And I think there are a lot of people that want to see Finn wield the lightsaber more so than they, you know, want to see maybe Ray wield the lightsaber, just given what was teased in the force awakens. And I Ray's my, my favorite character from the sequels. So I, you know, I'm going to, my butt's going to be in the seat no matter what, but if, all of that was kind of teased in Rise of Skywalker with the Finn truthers out there yeah. that they were hoping he's force sensitive and he's not going to be in this movie. I think there's going to be a lot of people upset and it could hurt. I just think this movie, there's a lot of potential for it to be a groundbreaking Star Wars story that propels Star Wars really well in the future. But I think there's an even greater chance that there is a large sect of fandom that are going to possibly look for any reason to derail this movie before it even, you know, hits the ground uh, running. And I think John Boyega deciding not to be in this movie or them not being able to get him in here would give them a little bit more ammo than they already have or need. And I'm worried about, I think that if he, if they come out with an announcement here next few months that John Boyega is coming back as Finn, they drop a picture of him wielding a blue lightsaber or whatever that is. And then they bring like a a picture of him and Daisy or something. It would just be, it would be big time. And I think the excitement level would just be absolutely through the roof at that point. But no, I don't, I don't think it's like absolutely critical, but Borderline. Borderline. It would instill a lot of confidence in the movie to be able to, Mm -hmm. because like when you think of the sequel trilogy, they're on the sequel. Defenders have a lot of things they point to that worked, but Mm -hmm. but there's detractors in the sequel trilogy. But 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 even the detractors can't never really say anything that negative about the relationship between Ray and Finn. Right. They were the linchpins mm-hmm. of the entire trilogy, and like their bond really worked for pretty much everybody. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's something that you need to continue with because their story's not done. So Travis Mitchell says, "How's it going, guys? I'm one of the sequel defenders. One of us, Travis. One there's of mo- us. There's or uh, as Landon would say, there's more of us, Travis. There's more of us." So we're 43 minutes in and sorry, I take a drink there. We haven't got into the juicy part of tonight's show because <clears throat> Star Wars is awesome. and There's lots to talk about. So <clears throat> let me put this uh, thumbnail on here and let's talk about the massive two episodes of the Ooh. Bad Batch that we got this week. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I was sitting with my Star Wars uh, blanket you know, clutching my knees pretty uh, sad at the end of these two episodes. And I'm sure you guys were feeling similarly as we watched these. So do we want to start with the first episode uh, and just go in order? Or would you rather start with the one centered around the bad match? I will, because, you know, they they work in a pair. But in in real reality, you could tell they, they tell two very different stories here. Uh, so I'm going to just throw it to you guys. Which one would you like to start with? Do we want to go with, you know, Emery in the vault or do we want to go with the story of the batch themselves first? Let's go in order. 
Yeah. Okay. That works yeah. perfectly fine. Make it easy. So, okay. <laughs> so the first episode, if you're watching this show and you're watching for 45 minutes, you know, like what happened in the bad batch by now, I am assuming. So Emery is now the chief scientist. She finds out, we find out what's in the vault and it's basically a bunch of children that they are holding captive. And we get Cad Bane delivering an infant of all things to uh, the vault as well. And other children look like they're what? Six years old, seven years old, maybe yeah. something like that. Not very old. And I think it, I'd say that's probably too old. I think they're probably okay, like, like four or five, maybe. Like they look oh, yeah. really young. I mean, okay, I, yeah, I, I, okay, that's fine. I think the one who ran away is probably a bit older, but like yes. I forget. Um, Ava, I believe, was her name. Um, I believe, uh, but 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 she, no, e e yeah, Eva's no, Eva's the one that is the one that didn't run away. I think it's like Jax or something is the yeah, one that ran I, away, something like that. But what did Jax you... was like six or seven, and and and, and I want to say Eva was, was like probably like mm -hmm. four or five, which is absolutely mm -hmm. insane. So we know that the Empire has been hunting for kids with high midichlorian counts for a while. We've known that since Rebels, whenever uh, Rebels was going on, there was a few episodes about that. And in the Clone Wars, we saw Palpatine, you know, hiring bounty hunters to, you know, not take just any bounty hunters, kids. Cad Bane, Cad, Cad Bane's been this for a long time. He's he's always for whatever reason he's just the he is the child hunter of the yeah. Star Wars universe. So my question to you guys is: this wasn't a surprise at all to see this. Uh, we maybe weren't expecting specifically these. Children I wasn't expecting either. it to be as hard expecting. to watch. But what what for you was the most difficult part about watching this? Because we've seen storylines like this before in Star Wars, but for whatever reason. You know the way they told this story. I think it it just hit at a deeper emotional level because maybe it was because of just the level of captivity that's going on and the lying to these children. But I want to know uh, from you guys what do you think um, hit like deeper on an emotional level about this than maybe other times we've seen this arc in Star Wars? Uh, Nate, what about you? Ah, uh, it's just for me. It's like so. Um, outside of here, uh, my part-time job is I work at a children's museum. So I work with a lot of kids and whatnot. Um, and the thing with kids is they're just endlessly full of life and full of energy and full of what more people need. And in this episode, and, and, and what made it different is seeing kids lose everything and lose all sense of hope and what makes them innocence and, and they lost every single sense of humanity. So that was just really tough to watch. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's a story we, I don't want to say we needed to see, but man, it really made you want the empire to lose mm -hmm. really something right. fierce. So yeah, it, yeah, it, it just, Man, it, 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 yeah, it definitely mm -hmm. hit different this time around. It's just seeing, I think, too, just her trying to balance between when she calls, when she first talks yep. to the kid, Eva, and she's like, My name's Eva. After yep. she says SP54, you him. She didn't have like, a choice a but to connect with these right. kids. And that's the thing with kids. Mm -hmm. It's like they want to reach out and, and mm -hmm. like, and look for something. But yeah, it's just, it just got beat it and just beat it out of them. It's like, and God. so. And like she's saying SB 54, but they have a hemlock right there saying like, don't get close to the subjects, mm -hmm. like the specimens or whatever they are. God, and, I can't wait to, for him to get his. Oh my goodness. So Travis says personally, you know, he's seen this story so many times, much more brutal versions of it in stranger things. Oh and yeah. So he wasn't really as bothered by it. There's always so more versions of it. I will, but. but like, I'll push back on the stranger things aspect of, so the stranger things part like does do, like a really good job with it comes to 11 and everything, but we don't necessarily see with 11, like all the other like children, like she's almost like bullied by some of the other children, which is even worse too. But like with this one, it's almost like we're seeing 
the people, the captors themselves building those relationships yeah. and trying to realize what's wrong. And then they, they themselves kind of seeing like they're a part of this brutality instead of like 11 rising up and, and doing this uprising against the captors. We're seeing like more of a humanity from one of the people in charge of, you know, the prison, so to speak. Uh, but, oh man, I can't wait for the final season of Stranger Things. Pretty excited right now. But uh, Jay, uh, what did you think about the story? Like, what did you think about Nate said just about like seeing these children lose any sense of like innocence and naivety that they were holding on to for, you know, hopefully much longer. That was kind of squashed. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because as I was watching the episode, I think, you know, and we can talk about this as well. It's eventually going to lead up to grogu and them yeah. taking a baby that's mm -hmm. what it's gonna lead to and they took a baby and in this episode you know like yeah. they they kind of yeah it was a small infant um but for me what really hit hardest the most was the the treatment it was the right scientific it was the cold it was the inhumane treatment you know mm -hmm. shooting a kid um, taking an infant away from kids unconscious mother. and they're sticking him without any <laughs> consent or anything. It's like, mm. Jesus. And I think we saw this seeing it in a star Wars animation, right? Like aspect, I think was That's made it hit harder than this. That's the thing. Than, it's like, like we like don't like see this stuff show. in star Wars ever. So seeing it, it's like, Oh my God, we're, star Wars is going there. Right. In, so. in in animated in animation too it just yeah. it made it was yeah. very like not surprising what they're doing but surprising that you're going to have a whole episode devoted to this specific thing instead mm. of just maybe a quick like you see who's inside the different cells you know maybe and it's like a brief thing right there but it's it's interesting i what do you think emory is going to do because Omega is on her way, Emery's going to have to deal with a character she already has a relationship with now being involved in there. And you know, Omega is going to be plotting uh, a child rebellion before uh, you know five seconds into her you know entrapment there. So I'm curious, what what do you guys think Emery's going to you know what's her end game here on the story? Probably well, giving think... the... go ahead, sorry, Nate. Yeah, yeah, we jumped at the same time. Yeah. I think it'll probably just be as simple as her just turning on Hemlock and sending out the coordinates of Tantus to the Bad Batch, and away we go. Right. So, she's so dying. Think, you yeah. think she's dying? I think she's going to sacrifice herself. For oh, the kids. I think she's a goner. Possibly. Possibly. Jay, is she a goner? I mean, I think so. <laughs> um, I think that's what it's going to lead to. I think Hemlock's yeah. going to kill her. Right, right, right. I think that's where it's leading to. I mean, I think we can all see that this leading up to her eventual turn. Um, she's turning. There is no doubt about no that. Right. <laughs> yeah, they're not. So they're not being coy about if she's going oh, yeah. to turn or not. Like her giving the, like the gift the at the end is definitely her saying that this is what you know is going. Like she's going that direction. I just think it's going to be curious on. Is she going to survive this turning or not? I don't. I think that she's going to have this moment of defiance where she gives the location to Tantus out, and Hemlock's going to discover that, and suddenly that's when you know she has like maybe a brief great speech or something, a great line of defiance yeah. before he pulls the blaster on her and he just kills her. And I'm telling you right now, I'll put it even a step further. She's kill. He's going to kill her and Omega is going to watch it happen. Like she's going to be Ooh. standing there watching it happen. I like it. I and hate it, but I like it. Like Omega is going to be drama trying to get this escape route going. And they're going to put freaking Omega through the ringer. Once again, making her have to watch others continue to suffer and take on the punishment for trying to help her, which has been what, which is why she turned herself over in the last yeah. episode in, in the last episode, which we're about to talk about. So I think, I think that's the direction that we're going with Emery personally, personally, yeah. any other notes you want to hit on Jay, uh, Nate, before we get into the next episode, which I think is going to be the big one to talk about here. what did you think? Actually, uh, this is something I don't think was talked about enough. Tarkin was is kind of in the dark on what's going on yeah. uh, on That's Tantus. He doesn't really know what's going on. What did you? That kind of surprised me a little bit. Like I don't. It think didn't surprise that, me at all. I but. I think not like the cl the cloning aspect, but Tarkin not having any sort of 
intel on because he had no dirt on hemlock at all and i feel like tarkin's the guy like i want to have something on everyone so i can keep my place and the fact that he had nothing other than just threats about we well, better show results but he doesn't even know what those results would be because he doesn't know anything i i thought it was a little interesting he had nothing but fear to try to instill in him yeah, it didn't really surprise me, um, the Tarkin's response to Hemlock and his mm -hmm. call to action um, and him not knowing anything either, and and which is a repeated beat. Um, we saw Tarkin kind of deliver the same threat to Thrawn and Rebels with the TIE Defender program as mm -hmm. well. Um, Tarkin, he is a character that is so focused on like things like the Death Star and things that aren't theoretical he is very mm -hmm. practical in right. how he goes about things and he doesn't really think with with that type of scientist mentality and that type of mad scientist thing right. that guys like thrawn and hemlock mm -hmm. and those kinds of guys have so yeah the, like it's which was interesting that, yeah. that he was thrown in though as the guy to have the conversation with him because uh -huh. If, if Hemlock's being threatened by someone, I thought it would have been like maybe Palpatine is like zooming in or that's like the I don't think I don't know if Vader's aware of what's going on here on Tantus. But I don't think so. having Vader be the one to threaten him or like Palpatine, someone that has an idea of the stakes and knows what's going on yeah. on this project other than Tarkin, who just apparently needs a few more Imperial credits assigned to uh, building, you know part x of death star but anyway uh jay what do you think about tarkin's little moment real quick it's interesting i mean you know like like you guys said he is more focused on the death star but i think it also just makes sense um story-wise because mm -hmm. i mean tarkin and his character doesn't well he doesn't last you know past episode four and for him to be in the dark just makes sense. And it just shows you how many layers there is to the empire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Palpatine's so, been playing in this for decades. Right. And so. Manslayer talked about Palpatine hiding Exegol from Vader too, but we know Vader ended up being at Exegol. So I, I I've confused about some of the timeline stuff with all of that. because it, It's mostly comic related and everything. Yeah. And that can be a little bit uh, tricky, but I also am curious, you know, it's not a secret project Nancy necromancer. And this is more pre right before the sequels start, but in Mandalorian with Moff Gideon and them are having the shadow council. He's like, it gives commandant Hux time to, you know, make do on come through on project necromancer or whatever. So like they're aware of project necromancer. But they don't know how is, deep it goes, but, or do they like, I don't know. He's like aware of like, but, do they know what it means for them to come through on Project Necromancer? Like, what are they aware of? And does Tarkin even know about? Like, I'm just, it was just, I would love to get a little bit more information. Those are things I want to find out. And, and, yes. and like, this is the show to do it, but they're, ah, and, and they want mm -hmm. to do it. Just do it. Give us it's, all the it, answers. It, it felt like they're starting to maybe just go all in on that with that episode. I'm curious to see what they do. We got what? Four, got four episodes left. left? We got four, four left, left, right? Yes. And That's like, right. The finale is probably going to be all the assault on Tantus. And get all Any that chance are the finale is like a 40 minute finale instead of just like the 25 so. minutes. You think it'd be like a little longer. I think it could probably push the same length as like the mm -hmm. premiere, which is like a solid, like what hour or something like that. The so premiere was could. an hour. Yeah. So I think they mm -hmm. could do that. And, and okay. which is possible. I mean, yeah, I okay. don't know. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, I, I, I hope so. I hope we get a supersized <laughs> episode. So the episode ends. Or sorry, the next episode begins when we're going with the Bad Batch. They're packing their things to leave. Pabu, you know, they've realized we're not safe here anymore. And the people here aren't safe as long as we're here. Mm -hmm. So they're packing things up to head off to who knows where. But of course, uh, what's his name? Like CX2 or CX2. whatever it is. CX2 is sent by Hemlock. And they are compromised and take out the ship wrecker is nearly killed at the very beginning of the episode i thought actually i didn't 
I didn't think they would, but I was like, part of me was like, would they kill Wrecker? Like, would that be something that they do to surprise everyone? Like, he has a show of it defiance could. to help them in that moment right there. Could he? That die? would have been a very ballsy thing to do to establish. Yeah, I, I, I was like, threat. are they really going to do that? And this really in like that this episode. Uh, but you know, the episode ends with Crosshair not being able to hit the target, oh. which has been. You know, a recurring theme that we've seen from him not I've been, being able to be his yeah. former self and not being able to hit the target. And Omega ends up going to Tantis with them not knowing anything about her, you know, whereabouts. And so from across the board, Omega and Crosshair deciding to give Omega up to go with this plan uh, to, you know, some of the dynamics between Hunter and Crosshair this episode, Wrecker's injury, uh, Omega putting text goggles on, you know, the place on Pabu to Pabu being pretty much their way of life being destroyed. Now this episode, this one hit harder for me than the previous one, just because we were with the characters that we loved so much. And I was really sad to see Omega separated again from her brothers. And, but I think the, the part that impacted me the most was crosshair missing the target. Like that was the one that really wrecked me because you know he's going to he's gonna beat himself up for that so hard he's gonna take that so hard and i'm hoping that people don't look at him and blame him for for any of this but i want to throw it to you guys what about this episode stood out the most to you where where did you draw your biggest oh my's or ooh, this is from this one jay for me it was the crosshair moment because I, I like as I was watching it, um, you know, like that 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 is the key moment, right? And it's a moment that they've been setting up all season. It's not just you know that oh he just all of a sudden missed. No, he's been missing the entire season, and so it feels like they've been building up to just now one small moment, and it's such a key moment, like mm-hmm. right, um, like like you said, Tyler, and when I saw that. Of course, you know, you have the, the other stormtroopers there that interfered with him. But yeah, like you just, it, it was a real gut punch. And then when he missed it, I was just like, you know? Mm-hmm. It was, it was like, you did just kind of put your hands in the air. And you're just like, oh, like, no. So like, you, were just, you were just hoping that, and they were building for him to miss the target. Like they were yeah. showing you this. But part of me was hoping like, he won't miss like he's not gonna miss like they're they're doing the opposite thing where they're showing you miss all the targets and he's frustrated but he has this moment mm. where for omega he can come through and then the plan succeeds instead of oh no like this is gonna fall back and and we have like a whole new thing where hunter and crosshair now are having to find omega nate when and crosshair missed the target was there an audible reaction from you yes. or just silent yes. sadness it was very audible. It was an audible <laughs> gasp. Um, because I've been on this show multiple times this season, and I have done nothing but sing the praises of what they've been doing with Crosshair, and always pointing out the fact that they are building to the moment when he hits the shot that matters most. Mm-hmm. This was the shot, and he missed it. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my god! The the, the like, oh, it was. It was gut punching. It was absolutely gut punching. And so now what do they do with Crosshair in the next episode? How does he beat himself up? How does Hunter beat him, beat him up over this? And, and and do they have a coming together moment type mm-hmm. of deal? Because they probably will. They'll, um, they'll probably argue like they always have. And then they'll come together to try to find one last gasp for Omega. And, and right. that'll be a lot of fun. But, man, it was... It's tough because, like, man, and and I've said on this show as well, like, when Crosshair hits the shot that matters, I will hoot and holler at 3 a.m. in my <laughs> apartment. I do not care. I will wake the whole entire place up because I love that character well, so Well, you're not going to be waking them up because I'm sure they're all staying up till 3 a.m. to watch the Bad Batch as well. Oh, you know it. Oh, you know they, it. They, what else would you be doing at 3 a.m.? I know. I, I know. Come on, guys. You guys are watching. I mean – my neighbors are actually big Percy Jackson's fans, and we actually talked about the show for a little bit. So we were That's awesome. <laughs> so, That's so, awesome. so they could be watching Bad Batch. I, I don't know. They could be. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so yeah, I mean, that was the obvious moments that 
sucked. I, I, I felt like he was going to miss it whenever he was gearing up, and it was just oh, like, yeah. oh, man. The and, moment the troopers started going going after him and attacking him, it's like, yeah, no, he is not pulling this he's not, off. It's not going to happen. Do you, what do you what do you think was going through? What did you think of the last moment with Omega? Because the, the show ends with her just kind of taking a deep breath, almost like, and you felt, like for me, I, I just felt so much emotion for this kid who knows the environment that they have willingly put mm -hmm. themselves back into at such a young age. Like she's just a kid and she's like taking a deep breath because she's like, she's like, I know what I'm getting myself into. And it was like just preparing herself for what is to come. And that, <laughs> that was, that, that was a lot like that to me, the would have been obviously just after crosshair missed the shot. And you just go to Omega sitting there, just kind of closing her eyes and taking a deep breath. And it's just like, Oh my gosh. Like, let me, let me be in the boat for you. Omega. Like I will take you out. Like I will switch places with you. I'm, I'm ready to take on the blood tests and the punishment. As long as you can go back to your little Island uh, village girl life. What, what what are you guys thinking about just the way it, when it cut out after she has her final like moment go for it someone just pop in uh yeah it was a great way to end the episode and especially coming off of the previous episode we watched and seeing what they were doing to those with high m counts and whatnot so just now picturing that being omega and this anchor for years mm -hmm. now that we've had an omega fall into that and become that mm -hmm. like the horrors of that and like you mentioned the sigh she doesn't realize yet that crosshair failed and so right. when she realizes because you know she's going to be thinking the entire ride over to they're Tantus, on their way they're on their way or she's either panicking it's like god i hope that i hope he did it because like you hate to Think but you know Omega's going to believe he did. Yeah, yeah, and and it sucks because you have to think in the back of her mind she's losing confidence as well. And like, if he didn't, it's like she has to be thinking in the back of her head, how am I going to get out of this again without him this time, mm -hmm. all by myself? Because that was the key to her getting out the first time. Was yes, was yeah. crosshair. Man, yeah. it it sets up. We got four episodes left. I. Really hope that, and Jay, you can chime in here on this one. I really hope that we might still have a mission of the week next week, but I really hope they just go full-fledged, like, you know, all in on these last four episodes. Like, we are not holding back anymore. No, no. Like, I, I love a good fluff episode of Star Wars animation. <laughs> I really do. But I, I mm. hope that, you know, here on out, after a two-part episode like that, I feel like you, with only four episodes left in the show, you have to go all in from here on out. Like, you are launching head first. You are going for it. And you're given, you know, everything you got for four episodes. And I, mm. I think that it, I think it will do that. Um, but Jay, if you if it does not do that, um, how big of a scathing review are you going to write on Star Wars Newsnet? Is the question of the hour. Well, thankfully, I won't be the one to do the review next week, <laughs> so I I, uh, I avoided that bullet. Someone else is going to have to jump on the grenade for that. The finale um, is actually just a mission of the week, fighting a monster, and they just <laughs> leave this ambiguous and be like nothing happens, like a mega's trapped, and they're just like fighting right. a sea dragon. <laughs> I'll tell you this though, like now that Omega's going back to Tantus, and now that you know Crosshair didn't actually make the shot, who do you think they're gonna go to though for help and to get um, Omega back? I don't think we're gonna even see them go to anyone in particular. Oh. I think it's gonna be like they're gonna get with Echo, they're gonna get with Rex. They're yeah. going to see what intel they have, and then I think they're just going to look into Emory giving, finding a way to send a signal to where they're mm. at. Like Omega's okay. going to like tell yeah, them like how to get it. Yeah. I think Omega's just going to like, tell Emory like, please just send them a message here or whatever to these people using this code, and Emory's going to send the message, and they're going to get it and be like, let's go. <laughs> I think I think that's what's going to yeah, happen. That's what I, I, would, I, do. I, I would do. I would. That's do. what I do. I I think that makes sense because like the entire show has been building as well to this clones making one last stand to fight the empire 
And so I think mm-hmm. that would be the play is to try to rally the troops, as you as right. one might say. And the clone Avengers battle. will assemble. Let's do it. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be glorious. I can't wait. So we have four episodes left. It's going to be a fun ride to the end. We've been on for an hour and nine minutes here. And so now it's time for the shameless plugs portion of the show where I tell you how Star Wars News Net is your stop for all things Star Wars. Please uh, join us here every Thursday night. My name is Tyler Bradshaw. You can follow me on Twitter or X um, at TyBrad5. You can also check out the Star Wars News Net timeline show. We just dropped uh, the last episode, you know, on Monday for the timeline show. We talked about everything from my favorite Star Wars book of all time, which is Cataclysm uh, from Phase 2 of the High Republic. Uh, So be sure to check that out. We're going through every canon story in Star Wars. And, you know, you can always check us out here on Star Wars News. Please like and subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 8,000 by the end of the week if we can. We're almost there, so we just need like nine more. So hop on board, have some fun with us every single week. I was just talking to Jay uh, before, and we have some fun ideas for some just pre-recorded shows, other shows that we're going to drop besides our timeline show. We have the live show. I drop other videos and shorts, you know, every other week. But we have some good ideas brewing as well. So that's gonna be that's gonna be great. Um, actually, do you have time to answer one last question from Manslayer guys before we get out of here? Always. All right. What do you think could be the next animated show? Something between episodes three and four as a sort of continuation of the Bad Batch or something between episodes six and seven? Uh, New Republic, Luke, Leia, Han, Ben Solo, like we know it's coming. I have said for a while that uh, I'll leave that up there. I've said for a while that I think that a Luke Ben show would be the way to go. I think that's with all of the sequel type content, like that kind of arrow that we are doing. I think the Luke Ben uh, Jedi Order show would be fantastic or the way to go. Or if they wanted to do something with Rey uh, post Rise of Skywalker to lead into the Rey movie, I think that would be uh, really fun as well. I think anything set in post episode six or post episode nine would be my preferred route unless they went and did the backtrack all the way to the High Republic and did something in the High Republic. Uh, What about you guys? I'm with you on the High Republic. I think I've mentioned that before. I mean, I I think that um, the Luke and Ben is probably the best bet and to really flesh out that era. I don't think they're going to do it, though. I think Mm -hmm. they um, they should just leave that alone until the Ray film when that comes out. All right, that's fair enough. I think I don't think they're I don't think they're gonna do that. I I don't think so. I I just think that would be the best. <laughs> I just think that would be amazing though. That'd be the best one. I would love to watch. What about you, Nate? Yeah, I think if they do Luke and Ben, I think that would be a Tales of the Jedi type of story. I think they might do that at some point. Um, I would love a High Republic show. Um, I would love a continuation of the Bad Batch. I would love a story of Thrawn in Peridia and exploring the new galaxy. Um, I think that would be the one I would want to see most, just to get a completely new taste of something in Star Wars and explore that and figure out what's going on there before Ahsoka Season Mm -hmm. 2. At the end of the day, I am down for anything (laughs) Lucasfilm Animation wants to shove into my face because... Like everything they do, it's not everything they do turns or, 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 or everything they touch turns into gold, but it's pretty close to gold. <laughs> so it's as close Fair as you enough. can get to gold. So like, just give me whatever you guys are working on. So Fair enough. Fair enough. What about uh, Jay? Tell me where you can find you. What's going yeah, on? Yeah. So, um, well, right here, um, you can check if I can point it the right okay whatever i was trying to point it out like for the people uh looking at the youtube uh, channel but um no you can find me at good game suit which is my youtube channel it's a gaming channel i just did a review on dragon's dogma 2 that went up today so please feel free to check that out you can also check me out on uh utini as a contributor there at that website and of course here at star wars newsnet very good nate uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nate underscore Manningham, where I talk movies, 
uh, sports, all kinds of other stuff, Star Wars as well. Um, I kind of run the Star Wars Newsnet Twitter page as well, so interact with us on there, and I'll try to interact with you guys as well. On StarWarsNewsnet.com, don't forget, Living Force comes out next week. Go check out my review. We have more content about this book coming up in the, in the next week or so. Um, yeah, read this book, guys. You will not regret it. This is a great book. John Jackson Miller delivered again. Shocker, I know. <laughs> well, everyone, it was a great time. Join us every Thursday night for Star Wars News Net Live. We're going to be talking Bad Batch next week, and who knows what else we'll talk about because, you know, we had no idea that Tales of the Empire trailer was going to get dropped tonight. So, who knows? Thank you, everyone, for joining us in the chat. Uh, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and stay tuned for further updates here on Star Wars Newsnet for Light and Life. Until next time, everyone.